My ringtone too, so I'm like, oh. are we ready? Okay. Hi, everyone. Nice to be back, isn't it? Group is growing. This is great. Um, and I just want to share what's coming up in case um, you haven't been at the past meeting or two. Um, next month, we're going to have Allison Meese. Um, she is, she lives in the UK. She travels to Africa. She does photo safaris. Um, and she has fantastic images. She's got a website. It's Allison Meese Photography. I will send you some MailChimp um, images of hers. And she's really excited to talk to us. I don't know um, what time she's going to She's going to be live and she's going to be in the UK. So I don't know what time she has to get up or stay up. But anyway, she's going to be with us. So um, yeah, that'll be fun. And so that's next month. And then um, in January, we're going to have, um, we're going to talk about 52 frames, which is a website and it's a photography challenge. And um, I just joined it, haven't put anything on, but it looks like a lot of fun. And in case we want some challenges on what to shoot, they actually have a weekly competition. They'll throw an assignment out there and it's our job to shoot it. So um, it'll be kind of fun, get us back enthused and at the beginning of the year. Um, then tonight, we have our friend um, Tim Payne is um, talking about birds, and he's going to show us a little demo on how he puts together his images. Um, he drove up from South Haven tonight. The weather was nasty down there, so he's going to kind of skip out after his, his presentation. So if anybody has any questions, are you going to have time at the end for some oh, questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But um, yeah, we look, we're looking forward to him sharing with us tonight. So this would be great. Thanks everyone for coming. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Tim. Right. Let me share the screen here. Just Hold on just a minute. <laughs> All right, well, good, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Tim Payne. Let me bring up my slide deck here. Thank you. All right, I will try. Thank you. Very good. All right, as, as Evie said, um, I'm actually a member of the Grand Rapids Camera Club, but I've not been really active other than joining in on a few Zoom meetings here and there. Um, so it's kind of nice to actually come up here, uh, see a few faces. Um, if, if I'm still around um, after the presentation, oh, I'm happy to, to meet, meet with some of you and talk if you like. Um, but with that, we'll just go ahead and move move forward on the presentation here. Oh. I'm going to see if this works better. Not a problem. Right, test one, two. Oops. <laughs> okay. uh, this is always a great part of doing live, right? Is it? Everything can and will go wrong. But can people hear better now? Yep. That might be a little loud. Kind of want to feedback. If we get feedback, I'll move it back there. All right. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, no, my, 
name again is Tim Payne. I live currently in two different places. I live one in Concord, Michigan, uh, most of the week, and then I spend my weekends in South Haven. And I'll cover that a little bit more a little bit later in the presentation. So I chose the topic of photography is for the birds, and that's primarily what my my latest several weeks of photography have been just shooting birds outside of my house in South Haven. We have a large picture window, and uh, this afforded me the opportunity to be lazy, basically sit inside the house during any type of weather, and then I use my lens, and then the big bird on the third image is myself. All right, so a little bit about me. I started my journey in photography technically five years ago. Bought an Icon D5600, um, saved my money and, and did purchase some nice glass. Um, so I have some decent lessons. So I've learned over time, it doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, but if you have a decent lens, you can get some nice shots. Um, I, I usually uh, say that I get lucky a lot with, the, with getting some of the shots and I'll take luck any, any day. So, so you five, five years ago, I invested in the camera. So I started taking pictures. I want to get your, can you get the screen? To, I wanted to switch your microphone, but I don't know how to do that without stopping. There it is. To your, okay. Yeah. Okay. That better? Yeah. Okay, very good. Once I started taking pictures with the camera, um, actually, once I first got the camera, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I have no, no idea whatsoever. So I got online. Internet is the manure of everything. And I, I found some videos from a gentleman named Jared Ford. And uh, he actually had a video for my specific model of camera. Yeah, so I watched the video a couple times and I started setting up um, the various settings to uh, what you suggested or recommended. And uh, he kept talking about shooting in RAW. It's like at the time I had no idea what that meant. Um, and then uh, after a while, I decided, okay, I'll save my images both as JPEGs and RAW file format. So, because he said so, he's an expert, right? So I got to uh, trust who, I, who I'm listening to. Um, so with that, I started shooting landscapes like the one in the image here. And then after a short while, after watching a few more videos, I decided to invest in the uh, Adobe uh, Creative Suite of products to, to start teaching myself Lightroom. Um, so then, uh, and during that process, a few more searches, uh, I kind of figured out how to process some pictures I had taken at the zoo. And I found a video by a gentleman, his name was Serge Ramelli. And he's a French photographer. He has some awesome videos. I liked how he was uh, straightforward and very helpful. And, and the tools he gave me to process these uh, Photographs was were phenomenal in my opinion. About three years ago, I entered a, my first photo contest. Um, a group out of Battle Creek was doing a contest for a calendar, their 2021 calendar, and I submitted a photo I had taken at the um, White House Nature Center in Albion. Um, outside of Albion College. And using some of the techniques I learned from Serge Ramelli, I was able to uh, get rid of an ugly um, steel tower that was in the background and, and uh, cleaned up some of the decking near the river and uh, changes such as that got me first place um, award for this contest. So first contest, Houston Award, I was really pleased um, the best thing about that is that uh, the prize money was $300, so I promptly turned around and bought a new lens to uh, 
So I wanted to do some uh, astrophotography. So I found a lens that was about that price range that fit the camera. And uh, no regrets on that investment. Uh, a couple other things I participated in is a few uh, meetups in different areas of the state through a couple of different groups, a uh, group out of Lansing and a group out of um, like Farmington Hills area. But we toured, uh, one of the tours was a meeting in the thumb and shooting uh, old school houses, barns, and uh, a couple of lighthouses. That was a really good exposure because I was able to get with uh, other photographers such as yourself, with varying levels of um, experience, and I learned a lot. And one other thing is uh, I discovered the, the phone app Photo Pills, if anyone has used that before. Uh, Photo Pills is a really nice uh, tool for planning um, some of your, your shoots. I don't use it near as much as, as what it offers, but uh, there's a nice tool in there that allows you to see the, the night sky from your phone and you can move your phone to see you know, where the, you know, the sun's going to set, the moon's going to rise or set, um, Milky Way position based on the time. So allow me to do a little better planning. And this time it's about all I've, I've done with what it does, but it's a pretty powerful tool. Then there was the pandemic. So during uh, the COVID shutdown, um, just a, little, a little more information about it. I've been using some of my photography and I apply it to ceramic tile. And I've been selling those at various uh, craft shows around the state. So when COVID shut all of that down, uh, I was stir crazy. So I was at home, I mean, we were all cooked up at home, right? So at one point I said, okay, enough's enough. Um, I told my wife, let's go lighthouse shopping. So I load up the camera, we leave real early and usually we'd head up to Mackinac City. And then I'd photograph the two lighthouses there. And then on our way up, we would decide if we're gonna go east or west um, down the coast and just uh, keep shooting all the, the lighthouses we could get to before we got there and then drive home. So that afforded me uh, the ability of taking a few of these photos. Here from Mackinac City. This is in Alpena. And this one is in Otsigo. The one in Otsigo is an interesting story that I got up early for sunrise. It was so cloudy, as you can see, I didn't think we were gonna see any sun. Then all of a sudden the sun peeked through just in time to hit the, the water crashing against that tree. And uh, we'll admit this is one photograph I submitted to Serge Romali and he didn't like it. Um, because that little red chair is in the way. <laughs> I think, well, we're from Michigan, we camp. <laughs> so to me, that's a campfire and that chair is sitting into a joy. Okay, another one of Mackinac City on a different trip. Old Prescott Island White House. Point that see. So we traveled out during the year. We didn't, we didn't let COVID slow us down. We just tried to stay away from people and, and enjoy nature. I took in one more early morning in Charlotte. 40 mile lighthouse. If no one has been, if you have not been to the 40 mile lighthouse, that is probably one of the most picturesque lighthouses I, I think in the state because you can get uh, this picturesque from all sides. And then of course we had to go up and see the ice caves including the Claremont Falls. All right, a little bit about the equipment I use. I mentioned earlier, I have an Nikon D5600. Uh, right now my, my shutter count is actually closer to 86,000 um, since I, I built this slide. Up month and a half ago. Included a kit lens, 18 to 55 millimeter. And then uh, when I purchased the camera, the gentleman I bought it from offered me to, to swap out the 
Nikon sold me a 300 with the camera on, and he mentioned I had a, the macro feature, so I thought, why not? I'm, I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff anyway, so let's just get an extra feature and, and play with it. This is uh, my second attempt at doing uh, astrophotography with the Milky Way. Um, this was with the, actually the, the original kit lens. Okay, and, and the second kit lens, the one I swapped out for the Tamron 70 to 300, uh, this end up, that's just my go to lens. Basically, I, I actually have used it so much that it broke. Oh. I sent it back to Amazon with my little um, my insurance I had purchased with it. And uh, it took a few weeks, but I got it back and it's still going strong today. And the number of parentheses, that's how many shots I've taken with that lens of that so 60,000. And uh, being in South Haven, I take a lot of pictures of, of South Haven like anything else. Um, uh, milkweed, that was actually taken with the macro feature of that lens. And the nice thing I learned about the using the, the larger uh, lenses allowed me to get through some of the fencing at the zoos and uh, to get some get a little bit closer to the animals without having uh, the fencing get in the way. All right, then that I saved up my money. I bought uh, the Tamron uh, 100 to 400. And I was just goofing off at the uh, state park in South Haven. Saw that a distance away and zoomed in on it and I uh, shot the, the rocks. And then my last large lens purchase is the 150 to 600 camera. This is what I do all my bird photography with today. That's, that's not a bird, but uh, I was impressed with that picture. I took it out of Park Zoo, got right through the fencing, and a uh, close up of their um, newer snow leopard. So I did invest in a couple of wide angle lenses as I mentioned earlier with uh, the Rokinon. Um, that was my first go-to lens, but then I, I found a, a small kit, inexpensive kit directly from Nikon that included a, a landscape lens and a macro lens. Um, the macro lens or the, the landscape lens is for, for as lightweight as it is and small as it is, it's the best, um, best photos I've gotten from uh, the white, any of the white angles I have today. All right, so then I got into birds as mentioned. Also, we have a large picture window in our, our place in South Haven. Right, we'll just take one quick step back. So during the pandemic, I had an opportunity to open up a, a um, quilt shop slash gift shop in South Haven. So we've been open now for about a year and a half. So our first summer, we actually had a small camper and a seasonal campground until we figure out what the heck we're doing. Um, you know, we're still trying to figure out what the heck we're doing. Um, I was able to uh, find a house. It's a nice uh, old barn on the property. This house has a huge picture window and enough room to just plant it full of bird feeders. And so I did. That's probably one of my first dozen shots I took last winter. So a couple of things that I discovered quickly, um, especially during winter months, when I shoot, I usually only have time in the mornings before I open the store and the evenings after I close the store. Um, unfortunately, um, I open at 10, and right now it gives me maybe an hour of okay light to work in, and in the evenings, forget it. I, I close my 
my score of seven, and it's already well, looks like it's midnight outside. <laughs> The largest issues I have um, shooting at those times, one is low light, and two, these buggers are fast. So, um, so being in a digital world, it's awesome. I can take a thousand pictures on a weekend, not a problem, and I have no qualms about deleting uh, you know, two thirds of them, four fifths of them, um, as long as I get a few pictures in there. But occasionally they'll stop long enough to get the shot. But there are a lot of blurry ones that get deleted. Okay, and this is the typical camera settings I start with. And over time, I've gotten comfortable with manual mode. It was painful to start with, but I'm, I'm liking it better. I want to try to retain more detail. With not only the bird, but its, it's immediate surroundings. So I found by using a larger aperture of uh, 7.1 to 11, depending on the lighting, um, I get better results. So it's not just maybe the face in focus and the rest of its body. Um, I don't know if you want but um, out of focus. Also, to help keep some of the some more of the detail on the quality of the picture, less grainy. I, I always shoot at 320 unless I get a better light and then I'll, then I'll uh, tweak that down a little bit. Um, right now, I'm not focusing at all about catching birds in flight. I figure with low light, that's gonna be a no-win situation anyway. So um, on occasion, I'll get a sunny day and the opportunity to shoot some and I'll do that. Shutter speed with the low light, I usually um, keep it at a really slow, slow shutter speed. And then of course everything's on a tripod. The birds are fast and I'm slow. And when you're holding that big 600 millimeter camera, it's, it's a little wobbly on me. All right, so I brought a demonstration of uh, how I'm going to walk you through how I um, do some of my post processing and these are the three images. The latest one I had taken is of the hummingbird. It's a juvenile male ruby throat. But I had to do some searching because I, I didn't realize that was uh, I knew it was not a female just from the looks of it. Um, I had to do some research and talk to a couple Facebook groups about now, what is this exactly? And they, they informed me it was a juvenile male. So I have to stop sharing for a minute. So you can do a live presentation. Yes. Light room. What you want to do is open up your Lightroom screen. And that's now you want to share that screen. Right. Okay. Right. All right, so these three images are as they came off the camera. Usually when I, when I go through the, the process, you know, there's hundreds of pictures. I usually before I even go into late room, I will use um, just the image viewing app, um, Earthen View, since, since they, uh, they allow you to view raw file formats and then I'll usually use Earth and view and I can go through them quickly and tell which ones are or ones to spend some time on ones I just need to delete right away. On the teaser than importing everything into Lightroom and then deleting them as I go. So that's why these guys have a star. That's just how I identify or read the ones I want to work on or at least look at a little bit closely. So once I've selected everything I want to work on, I usually throw, I'll start out with some base settings. It's not reset, sorry. After I had practice this morning, I forgot to reset them all. So a lot of things I do, and a lot of these are just from, uh, what I've learned through Serge Romali's, some of his videos. 
necessarily give you a rhyme or reason why I do some of these, but they, they seem they seem to work. So I usually will crank up the shadows high, take the highlights down to the lowest. If it's um, if they're all dark, which a lot of them are, I usually will play with exposure, but we'll wait on that for the moment. Since they're merged with others, I love to see the detail. So I pump up the texture and clarity just a little bit to start with. And then vibrancy, I usually take that around between 14 and 16. Then I just jump down to. Sorry. Okay. 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 I have to apologize. My my voice is monotonous, but when I listen to my type of voice in the classroom when I was in college, I call it monotonous. So I apologize. Okay, so once I've made the base changes, I go into details. And since I capture them at the ISO 320, there is going to be some grain. And another word I use for these, these are my magic or my happy settings. So I, I do this the same with every session. I sit down and post process and then I tweak each one individually if I need to. Usually for um, sharpening, I usually go to 75. Aluminum site um, 28 works best when I'm shooting at uh, ISO 320. And masking, I normally just take that up kind of high, but not all the way. So I have no rhyme or reason for that um, on a lot of these pictures because I do change it a little bit here and there, but it's a starting point. The last thing I do. Here is the little aberrations and the profile. All right, and then the basic. This is a feature that's fairly new in Lightroom for masking. And actually, they um, since I started writing this slide deck and presentation, they they've had another major update, and they've added a few other masking features that I've not had time to, to play with. Basically, here I just go in and select the subject. If I want to do a sling, it doesn't matter what it perceives as a subject and what I know as a subject, that's a starting point. So the nice thing about their, their new masking feature is when I select all of these to synchronize them. I tell it to also synchronize the masking. Now, in some of the earlier versions, I know if I copy the mask, it would copy it with the same shape as the, the mask of the picture I was copying it from. Oh, this is funny. Okay, we well, normally just work really fast at home on the same computer. Relax. Okay, so you can see the masking on here. There's the bird, the teacup. And the cardinal includes the, or the, the hook. And then the humming bird includes a lot of the uh, feeder. Nice feature about the uh, disc if I click on the mask and then I go to subtract, I want to get rid of that um, the detail from the mask. Are you thinking about those other images? Um, it won't. That's a good, good question. Once I get my subject selected, actually, there's a little bit more I need to delete. 
zoom in to 100%. You know, it's right in between its uh, beak is the background. I'm just going to add another brush. It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, once I have my subject highlighted, I'm going to hit those shadows and highlights again. And then we just use a little bit, a little bit of exposure just to get a little more depth that I, I perceive that I like. Which I'm assuming is a hill. The uh, tip mouse, so you can't tell what's coming out right now. Then there's one more enhancement I want to share. This has to deal with the eye. So this one, the, the iris, does show a little bit. So I found a technique online and I created a brush or a preset that allows me to, to pop that out a little bit. Back into the mask, create a new mask, and increase it. A lot of times I'll make it the same size as I am. Well, sometimes I'll make it a little bit larger. I'll show sure you what the difference is. So here I have a brush I created, which is Iris Enhancer. Iris enhancer is nothing more than initial three settings. Exposure of 0.35, clarity of 10, and saturation of 40. And if anybody wants any of these afterwards, I can I can send an email with those settings. So I should pop this back up to 100 percent So we can see. The only setting I have to play with here is the exposure. So you notice know, I made it a lot brighter around his eye, so I'll make it a little bit smaller. The same process here. I don't want to make that uh, the steel any brighter. Also, the space is still pretty dark, and that's why I bring up the exposure a little bit. And I could also have created the, um, the mask for the iris and the answer, and I could have synced that with all of them. Um, sometimes I find that it takes a little more time to process the picture because I have to find that little dot. Correct highlighting in each photo. Change it to the iris enhancer. Exposure just a little bit. That pulls up the iris. Cool. 
questions. Yes. Yeah, but having trouble with that reflection. Uh, the only problem I have, or only issues I have, is if we have the light on in the house, I'll get a lot of reflection. So I just move, move the lens around to to get around. Um. Keep the questions for the recording. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, one question is about how the light um, shoot properly through the picture window. Um, what challenges are glare from internal lighting? Um, if I do shoot it, um, the afternoon sun it does present also glare back where it reflects off my tripod or off the um, actually the table, our kitchen table is uh, white. So sometimes I'll see reflections of that in the window. Um, I just try to shoot around it as best I can. Um, the window does need wiped down once in a while. Um, unfortunately, we do get a few bird attacks. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't lost one yet, but we do see feathers and um, all kinds of birds um, on the glass from time to time. Um, I do not. Um, I think I tried. I tried it once, and I just you know, I found there's so many different applications for the plugins for Lightroom. Right now, I'm trying to teach myself a little bit of the uh, Luminar Neo, um, and that's there's a number of new plugins that they've just released with that that I like for sharpening um, in the background that I've not had time to play with yet. I, I do a little bit in Photoshop, probably not as much as I probably, probably should on some of these photos to make them pop out a little bit more. Also, when in the gift shop, I did create a published, self published uh, calendar with the title The, the Birds of South Haven. So it has four months of birds in it, and then the entire back of it is all the pictures of the birds that, that did not make the cut into the calendar itself. So, there's quite a few. We, get a, we have a lot of migratory birds, so I may only have one chance to get a photo of them. Actually, today I shot some of the evening crow's beaks, which I've not seen in here before. They were there for maybe three minutes and they're gone. As far as the hummingbirds go, we put the feeders out, and I don't think I put those away until the beginning of mid October. And my reasoning is the birds that are migrating, they need. So they can keep migrating. I've never been a firm believer that they need food out there to keep, keep birds from migrating. I think they know their job, um, but they need the energy to, to keep going, in my opinion. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate uh, the invitation to come and speak. Um, so this is lightning. If you I don't know some of my settings that I mentioned earlier with the IRS and hands, but I'd be happy to um, share that with the book. Any other questions here? We're located, uh, sorry, we're located on Center Street. So Center Street and the, the store is called Holden's Haven and we need to be in your shop. Right in South Haven? Yeah, right now on South Haven. 
It's been an interesting venture. My business partner does long article right in this right in the store. You know, we sell whole arrange fabrics. And then I I create most of the gifts that we, we sell. Like the, the ceramic tile I mentioned, um, the these are great things that um, Michigan is one of the birds that I designed in those are great. Yeah, what was the first? No, I don't. Oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs>